You didn't even notice, and now you have a very dark eyeglass. I didn't actually notice that. If I go and cover your sensor. It's crazy. In this video, I talk to Federico, Roberto, and Laura Righi, three brothers who just closed the largest equity crowdfunding round in Italy, raising an impressive 8 million euros. Their company is called Out Of and specializes in lenses. Their flagship product is ski goggles, and they use a unique technology that through the use of liquid crystals allows the lens to lighten and darken quickly, uniformly, and without the use of external batteries. Simply changing the orientation of the molecules, which is something that happens in tenths of a second, is enough to change the transmission of the lens, which means how dark you see there or how bright you see there. The technology I am talking about is called Irid technology, and it uses the same liquid crystals we know from televisions. These crystals are literally poured into the lens and allow more or less light to pass through. So I went to visit them at their headquarters in Brescia to find out what it is like to found and grow a company that makes physical products and what the challenges are of having to innovate and invent new technologies in an already established market like goggles and ski goggles. At the entrance, I was greeted by Laura who gave me a full tour of their new headquarters as the very first thing. Marcello, welcome to Out Of. Follow me and I'll show you all our secrets, almost all of them. On the ground floor as the first thing we have a waiting room with a company bookstore and there is also their own display like the ones they have in optical stores where they sell their products. All made in Italy by the way in metal, glass. I have to say that these were really appreciated. The, the quality of the display is often very, very important. In fact, out of, although they have their e-commerce and any customer can buy products directly relies on a large network of physical stores where they display their products. However, you then go up from the second floor with the actual offices where all the people who work are located. Both all applications of the iRID technology and all out of ice products, and we will soon be launching three more this winter, are being developed down there. There are also two labs on the floor where research and development is done. Here they are developing a motorcycle helmet with a visor that darkens and lightens based on external light. And if any of those who are seeing the video are riding motorcycles, they know very well that when it is sunny and there is sun in your face, you go into the tunnel, there is a moment where you cannot see. We would all like to use the dark visor, but then in the evening you can't see when you get home. With iRID visors, this problem is completely solved. Then there are 3D printers and other machines that I pretended to know about. A wave generator is utilized to ensure the liquid crystal is functioning perfectly. Shit, Anya, a microscopic is also used to verify the proper functioning of all substrates. Thanks to these laboratories, we are able to efficiently create prototypes for various activities such as skiing, motorcycling and live testing the product to thoroughly evaluate it. As a matter of fact, we possess abundant internal resources in motorcycle racing, skiing and trail running all of which greatly enhance our capability to effectively test these products. I personally oversee the motorcycle testing aspect, which is undoubtedly a challenging task. However, someone has to undertake it. Currently, there are 20 of us excluding individuals from the sales network and outside agents. I am proud to announce that we have experienced substantial growth as our company has expanded by an impressive 160%. Then we moved on the to the warehouse, to the which one. honestly amazed me. All the company's orders start from here. At the moment, and consider that these are not even all of them, we have 5,000 assembled masks ready for shipment for the winter season. But consider that over the course of a season, including assembly, shipping, private customers and stores, it's about 20,000 a year, maybe even more. Then there's the whole part about glasses, even the shelving over there in the back, which is the leftover from the summer stock that's obviously running out. Uh, right now we are mainly focused on Europe because we believe there is already a lot to do there. But now you sell more in Italy, I guess. You know, I don't know. I think we are 60% export, 40% Italy. Which country outside Italy is going the most? Austria, Germany, Switzerland. We now make only high-end things. For example, we have an average purchase price in the online store that is 220 euros on summer, which is very high considering sports sunglasses. After that, we went to the laboratory below, which I must, however, blur you completely because it is very secret. They have proprietary machinery where they carry out fundamental steps in the creation of the glasses and masks. In fact, all products are assembled and shipped from this office. There are even customized machines made exclusively for our use because the entire market for liquid crystal is primarily focused on screens. However, what we do with the requirement of meeting strict regulations involves optical devices that serve a completely different purpose. Thus, to achieve mass production of such a product, a significant amount of effort is required, including coordinating with various suppliers and possessing specific expertise in intricate details. Consequently, thus, uh, the process of developing this particular product from concept to execution necessitates a considerable amount of time. It is worth noting that we initially considered a different setup, spending a year on its development before encountering issues that compelled us to abandon the entire year's worth of work and start anew with the intention of achieving perfection. This seemingly simple object conceals a level of complexity that is truly remarkable. Very often they tell us, I can't believe it's that expensive. Mm. Unfortunately, yes, for now, yes. And do you physically create this eyeglass here? 
This is the place where the eyeglass is physically assembled. Our process involves lamination and quality control, then making the cell waterproof, and even the setup of the electronic components, all of which are handled together here. So you guys every day here have to assemble glasses? This is the warehouse team that is specializing. We are creating a new branch of warehouse personnel who then specialize in liquid crystal assembly. Back upstairs, we took a look at the meeting rooms with some of the awards they have won. This is the ISPO award, which we won with a ski mask using our iReady technology. The Amazon Launchpad Innovation Awards are open only to startups, but in any product category. And this is the latest one. Silmodor is one of the most important fairs in the world of optics. After that, I spoke with the first founder, Federico Rigi, as a first thing he told me the history of Out of. And I didn't expect it, but it starts several years ago in 2009. The beginning was basically 2009, and it was quite a few years ago. They were simply three brothers who were passionate about skiing and motorcycles, and they realized that they didn't like the goggles currently in the market. So, perhaps a little bit as a joke, Federico began to develop the first product. Clearly not having a budget, he cannot do much research and development, so he just provides some directives to a third-party supplier. We had an extremely limited budget, 3,000 euros, so it's not like we could do much. The only room for maneuver was mainly the color of the lens. With the budget, he can buy 650 masks. I received these 650 masks, all identical. More or less, it was 6,000 euros, about 10 euro a piece. And after that, he makes a tour among 150 snowboard stores asking if he could sell through these stores his own masks. Some of these accept and from there the whole adventure begins. How did the optical stores react to your proposal? Not with much enthusiasm, honestly. I mean 90% bounced me resoundingly. I would say 1 in 10 however overall said yes come on let's try. Prevent to these stores another thousand new pieces. He uses the money to order them. So without e-commerce he is able to take home the first income from the business which he immediately reinvests in the business. When when I had pre-sold about what, 300, 1, 400 pieces, at this point we were able to pay for the pre-production of these thousand. Creating an innovative mask with edges extending to the lens through another supplier. This time, the strategy was different. Instead of taking a finished product from a supplier, they had his brother, an industrial designer, create a model with precise specifications. This model was given to the supplier to build a custom project for them. In return, the supplier could use the design freely, except in the European market, where Autof had exclusive rights. There instead, we were able to put something of our own into it, because we had defined instead a whole shape that we liked very much which was then called ice and that one instead in our opinion was really innovative because it had the lens that took everything up to the edges only with blocks so it lacked the whole frame around it it was spherical however we didn't have the money to make a mold so there we basically made an agreement with the supplier where we said listen we do the study we give you the finished math you make us the mold that you can use in the us and korea which were let's say its main markets but for europe you give us the exclusive rights after that the real research and development begins from there they can afford to rely on multiple suppliers create different masks and keep trying new and more innovative models until 2017 when they provided their real srl dividing shares among brothers in the first year of the SRL, we were supposed to be at 500,000 euros. Little by little, they start working on IRID technology, which takes a full five years to be developed to perfection. And also in those years, they start for the first time to raise money from outside. They needed investment to get the R&D area up and running and to invest in IRID technology. We started working on it in 2018. It took us two years to get to a decent result in terms of optics, in terms of function. There we did the first campaign on Mama Crowd of fundraising because we, until that point, there had not raised an external euro. That part there for us was one of the most dramatic moments of the whole company because it was at the time of the COVID was 2020 and the stores, if not very rare exceptions, the bigger ones and so on, were not paying for the goods. There was a very big problem getting even the orders for the next season and going on with the business. I was very worried. I'll tell you this before we started the campaign. Obviously, the fact that we were then actually selected by Mama Crowd, the fact that the campaign went well and so on, those were all things that at the time were entirely to be seen. They might go well, they might not go well. That very little that was left over, we had to figure out where to invest it and we decided to just go all in completely on the Electra, on the liquid crystal things, which in hindsight paid off. However, at that moment there I say it was a pretty tough After that tough there was move. the Mama Crowd campaign? There was the Mama Crowd campaign, it went God. During the campaign, even there, we had a moment, a certain point of terror, because right at the moment when we had reached the first maximum, 
By the time the campaign had reached on 350,000 by then, the mass was almost ready, but spots appeared in the liquid crystals, which we couldn't figure out how to remove. And so even there, I had another attack because I was saying, it's not like I'm going to start the campaign now and then I can't actually produce the thing. It would have been a mess. It would have been a mess. Before the campaign was even over, we were able to solve it. And then when the campaign was finally over, we knew exactly how to do the production so that it would not give problems. How much did you collect? One million. And this served you to overcome the COVID? Definitely overcome the COVID. And what has happened in the last three years? We have been working now I mean, so much on the product development part. We are also making other, uh, other products. Out of uh, is doing the feather eyewear, which is a very light eyewear of a 16.8 grams. It is photochromic polarized. However, the focus is mainly on the development of liquid crystals. So many other realities. Our competitors have asked us to be able to have the same technology. So at first, we didn't really know how to handle the two. Then I said, listen, let's do two brands. And we opened Irid. Irid already generating revenue? No, not yet. But the other one does? Yes, as early as 2024, it generates revenue. How come? As of today, you have just closed the largest crowdfunding investment round in Italy ever. We are more or less at eight. We wanted to do 7 million in liquid assets to be combined with 3 million in debt. Then since, just before the notary, a whole series of new investors came in who were interested and some of them were really valuable as a network, as names to be had. Then we decided to increase this maximum a little bit. Growth has been exponential. The growth was very high, like 2021 out of 2022, we did more than 160%. But it's not so much the economic growth because of everything we did. The revenue growth part is the last thing I would list for The you. first thing is what? The first is definitely the improvement of technology, of everything. So from optical definition to internal reflections, the range of activation. Now also the optimization of suppliers. Then for a reduction of prices, the investation of all partnerships. How will you spend this nearly 10 million? 3 million or so are allocated for an in-house production line, also on the liquid crystal theme part. Some things like lamination and some processes at the waterproofing, etc. We have already internalized, others we plan to do. Then more or less four and a half million we have defined for marketing because you can have the coolest thing in the world. However, if no one knows about it, you don't go very far. To date, Post money is nearly 50 million in the company's valuation. Have you guys managed not to dilute yourselves too much over the years? Yes, we are diluted clearly. However, with the fact that we did the first round that anyway, we were not preceded, but we were already in revenue and everything. Basically, let's say once this round is done, more or less, we will give about 50% of the shares. However, there is to say that not all the other shares have voting rights. What is the future vision? What we are working on is to then go and do an additional round at the end of 2025, which would be the last, let's say, round, really. Once you get all the objectives with this round, uh, what you will do basically is scale up and then start with two special projects that I'm not going to give you too many details now. At this point, the intention is roughly by 2027 to assume an IPO on an Anglo-Saxon market, then go public. But in principle, uh, for not knowing what things will be like four years from now, I would say this could be the ideal. What do you think have been the elements in the company that have made you work or will make you work? Definitely the fact that me, Robbie and Laura get along very well and we always manage to avoid unnecessary discussions. So that, in my opinion, was definitely a strong thing. Another thing that then I don't have to say, we'll have to say the others who work here, however, that I think we have set up well is the relationship with the people who work here, how we choose them. The climate is one of our strong points. After a quick lunch break, I returned to the lab to ask Roberto, head of research and development, a few questions. And he is in charge of following the design of new products and develops new applications and solutions of IRED technology. Do you have to admit that we actually entered an established market out of sheer madness and passion? It's not like we had something so new. Then I think as everyone is working with sunglass lenses or otherwise sport lenses, at some point you are faced with the fact that under different conditions you need very different lenses. The first technologies it developed before IRED were design solutions that allowed, for example, lenses to be changed easily and quickly. Then came polarized photochromic lenses, which yes, are lenses that darken in the sun, but with a technology that is far inferior to liquid crystals. Why are they a totally different thing? Because a photochromic lens needs a chemical reaction and the chemical reaction is is inherently slower unless it is an explosion than what is instead a physical dynamic which is what happens inside the liquid crystals or said that is to simply changing the orientation of the molecules which is something that happens in tenths of a second even less is enough to change the transmission of the lens 
which means how dark you see there or how bright you see there. So uh, we came out with the first ski goggle with a lens based on liquid crystals, which was loved so much. Since then, we have improved the technology so much. Now we have a wider range, which really covers what are the situations that in 99% of the situations you find when you do an outdoor sport and with the user experience, optical quality, etc. Really up to what is a very high level sports product. The state of the art now is this lens, which even has a ratio of light passing through when it's dark to light passing through when it's bright uh, of 10x. So it gets 10 times darker at the time when uh, there's a need. Uh, this allows it to have a maximum transmission of just over 60%. Which as you can see when you look at it like that, it looks almost transparent to the eye but to even get to a 5% in the darkest state and it's an S4 category lens. It means you can use it discreetly in a glacier at 5000 meters. Uh, there's a photo cell here, it's actually just a small photovoltaic cell. So it's at the same time Mamukun is sensor and power source for the system. So by doing that, there's no battery. The goggle, you never have to recharge it. You use it as if it's just a normal goggle. It's also waterproof, so you don't even have to worry too much about it getting wet sometimes. Okay, uh, our product allows you to uh, compensate for uh, the changes. So once your eye, like after the uh, first five minutes that you put the eyeglass on, gets used to what the eyeglass has set as the ideal brightness situation and your iris adapts to that, after that it compensates for the changes and then you're fine. Except if there are not such extreme light changes that go out of the range of the lens, which a lens like this though, is an extremely rare thing. How did the idea of liquid crystals come to you? Liquid crystals are, at the moment, I would say the only known form of technology that allows you to change so fast. It's, uh, it's just so the idea of liquid crystals comes from the need for speed. So the photochromic lenses are an existing technology. Even we use them before. They have the problem of being on so slow. They even take minutes to go from dark to light state. How did the idea come to you practically? The company's main founder has a degree in physics, among other things specializing in light matter interaction. So that was right up his alley, so let's say he's particularly well versed on this sort of thing. The idea was his then? Yes, it was his. To produce their product, the steps are varied. 3D printing the frame, assembling the lenses, which we see as very fine lenses, but are actually many layers that are laminated together, including a layer that contains a container inside, a few microns in size, where the liquid crystal is poured. This is a very delicate step, which they took years to figure out how to do right, especially making sure that no spots or bubbles result inside the lens. Out of were the first to come up with this technology, and to date they are the only ones in the world, which is precisely why they developed Irid, just so they could sell it to other brands as well. After that, I talked to Laura again to ask how such a company is run. She told me that they all work remotely, with flexible working hours, and that as I often say for my company and my GAMI partners as well, with so much freedom comes so much responsibility. We, for example, don't have fixed working hours. Clearly, there are departments. You have to order yourself. There is extreme flexibility and a lot of responsibility. Each department has its own goals. You know what there is to be done, about how and when there is no problem. There are no time cards to stamp when you come in. There are those who prefer to start very early in the morning, so they then have a free day. Are they then being silenced for performance? Absolutely. He also told me what the areas of work are. But basically, I would say to you, the research and development department to warehouse, uh, which is a very important part. I always stay behind the fifth and poor people, but they are critical, administration, customer care, so operation speech, and then marketing and graphics and sales. And who cares so much about corporate culture? So Kuwanchi, we try to implement a lot of small things. We, pra, we provide the company gym, we have a company library, there is an Amazon account. So anyone can buy a books they are interested in. We do a lot of team building. When we have the warehouse unloaded, we do volleyball. We do one hour of volleyball a day. The guys have become athletes. At this point, I asked what it is like to run a physical company. I have been in so many software companies, so many online companies, social and all, but this was a company that made physical, touchable products. What are the differences? It works that the winter sales season is in February and you collect the pre-orders. You advance all the production, so you take all the production risk because there is no advance, there is nothing. You take all the orders. If you are talking about distributors, then yes. However, single shopkeeper, no, you do the pre-order, come to now, basically, depending then on the time. Now you start mainly distributors, then around October you start normal stores, and then there you start billing. Um, however, there is a whole slice of the year where you have found out mm, you have your pre-order, which is quote-unquote authentic, but it is obviously not binding in blood. Let's talk about it. Instead, uh, the different talk is restive. The optics, because it works in two completely different ways. That is, there is no pre-order talk. There you show up. For example, now we are going to present the new collection. You basically order on the ready. However, you invade an entire production without actually having a clear idea of what your volumes may be. 
So the two Speaking methodologies teams, are extremely which figures different. do you hire and which do you have the hardest time finding? Let's all say that the figures that we are looking for and hiring are changing so much because the type of product is also changing. For, for example, until three years ago, we would not have thought that we would have to have, for example, specialized figures in the assembly of liquid crystal. Now we absolutely will need them. Or we usually do the hiring internally. Each department head is in charge of the hiring and we always do tests, which I assure you are very much needed. For example, for the accounting department, very simple test. Take the VAT out of a price and what is the 20% discount plus the 10% discount? The people who answer these two questions correctly and I assure you are very few. We had a banking and finance graduate who could not take the VAT off a price. And again, I got confirmation that doing practical projects is crucial to entering the working world. This is a thesis I have always maintained. I hear this from all entrepreneurs now. So guys, hands on, it's just as important as studying. Anyway, this video was enlightening. It has always scared me to be an entrepreneur in the physical world and not the digital world. As a YouTuber, it's easy for me to think about selling a course or doing sponsorships, but selling goggles or ski goggles seems like an impossible task. And I really have to thank Laura, Federico and Ricardo for having me sneak in out of in their company because they are truly enlightening. Write me your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you with the next video. Bye.